All right, welcome to this video on how to draw influence lines, all right? First things first, what is an influence line? Well, if we look at this figure in the top right, we got this bridge, and what if we wanna know how the forces in the bridge change as a truck, I'll draw a little truck here, as a truck is moving across the bridge, for example. So we might uh, key in on one key thing, maybe it's the support reaction at A, and we wanna know how does the support reaction change as this truck moves across the bridge? Or what about the moment at the midspan of CD? You know, all these things might be of interest for us, so we introduce the concept of an influence line. And an influence line ordinate, which is just a fancy word for point, represents the value of an internal force or reaction for which the influence line is constructed. All right, boom, wow. So here we have two diagrams. The one on the left, this is the moment diagram. We're used to constructing these. Uh, hopefully we're used to it, super common. And what it is, is you take a force, let's say this P, which is acting at a point A, and then you can move over to some other place on the beam, and the moment diagram will tell you the value of the moment at that other location on the beam. Whereas an influence line, now the moment is at a specific point, all right? And the force can move around. So P is free to move all over the beam, and the ordinate right below P, that corresponds to the moment at this other spot, B, which is set for anywhere along the influence line. All right, so the influence line is gonna help us see the effect of a moving load for a particular internal force or reaction that is of interest for us. So it's gonna help us answer the question, where should we put this truck to get the worst load effect at a certain spot? Okay, fair warning, I'm gonna hit you with the definition right now. It's gonna be a little painful. Wow, wow. The influence line for any reaction or internal force, blah, 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 blah. Wow, that is super long. Um, okay, read it if you want, but I'm gonna cut to the chase. All right, so here is the chase. It's called the Muller-Breslau principle, okay? And it is fantastic. It's something that's gonna allow us to create influence lines really quick. And it's got three steps, okay? Just three simple steps. All right, the first step, we're gonna do what's called release the structure, okay? So if we're interested in moment at a certain spot, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce a hinge at that location. So we're actually taking away the ability of the beam or whatever it is to resist moment. Same thing in shear, we'll add this weird thing, I'll call it a vertical roller. And lastly, as a reaction, we are going to remove the restraint, all right? So in all these cases, what we're doing is we're taking away the ability of the structure to resist the thing that we're interested in, whether it's moment, shear, or having a reaction. Okay, so our next step is to introduce what I'll call a unit deformation. Okay, we're doing this at the same spot where we released the structure in step one. So if we introduce the hinge, now we're going to apply a moment on either side of the hinge to create a unit rotation uh, of equal to one, which in this case, both sides equal, equal to 0 0.5. And similarly for the shear with this vertical roller, we're gonna push one side up and one side down and create a displacement of one. With the restraint, same thing. We're gonna lift up that restraint or where the restraint was, a unit value of one, and then we're done. All right, that was easy enough. So we're actually done, at, it's actually just two steps. That third step was just recognizing that we were done, all right? Uh, crazy. So let's just put this into practice, okay? Let's go back to that bridge example and let's create an influence line for it. So we can see we have the original bridge at the top and let's say we wanna know something about the reaction at A. So what is the influence line for the reaction at A? for the support reaction as a truck or some kind of moving load is moving across this bridge. All right, so that's our big question. So all we gotta do, we just gotta follow the three steps from the muller law principle, all right? So step number one. All we're doing here is releasing the structure. So we took away the support at A. Boom, easy enough. Take the support away. Done step number one. Now, step number two, we're gonna 
produce this unit deformation. So in this case, we're going to push up at the support until there's a displacement equal to 1. And then all that's left to do is trace out the deformed shape. So we're doing that in red here. We can label all our points. We're 1 at A, we're 0 at B, C, and D. Done. That's our influence line. Amazing. All right? That really wasn't so hard. We really have to pay attention, though. We have to obey the rules of the rest of the structure. So as they get more complicated, we're going to need to make sure we know the conditions of the rest of the structure and can obey them. All right? So let's do this again. How about the moment at the midspan of CD? Pause the video if we're going too quick. So number one, we release the structure, introduce a hinge. Number two, we're going to provide a unit deformation. We find out to obey the rest of the structure, we actually have to lift the spot at midspan CD. And then we can just trace out the rest of the structure. Okay, so introducing that compression at the top of the bridge made us have to lift up that hinge. And then we can actually solve for these values just using trigonometry. So if we have a distributed load, we want to make sure we would place it between C and D in this case for the worst effect and not between A and C. That's what the influence line is telling us. One more quick note, our influence lines right now are being composed of straight line segments. And the reason for that is that we have a determinate structure. More on that later. OK, last one. How about the shear on the left side of support C? So we release our structure with this vertical roller. We deform it, a unit value of 1. And we notice that since we're talking about the left side of support C, the right side is still subject to the actual support at C. All right, this is important. So that means that the right side can't move the left side moves down a value of 1. Then we also have to recognize that our slope cannot change because of this vertical roller. So on the left side of the roller and the right side, a slope needs to remain the same, or our angle. Okay? In this case, it's flat, so it needs to be flat on either side. And the hinge at B is what allows the structure still to be composed of these straight lines in the end. All right, so click over to the extra video, which is going to give you more practice on some of these concepts and more challenging influence lines to try and draw. Peace.